In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a dependent or cascading drop-down menu using static text files as the source for the dynamically loaded options. This is how a dependent drop-down menu works. At the moment, the color menu is disabled, but if I select a product, say polo shirt, it then asks me to choose a color and offers me a range of colors. If I then change it to t-shirt, I get a different range of colors and a different range again. The options for the different products are stored in static text files. It's just HTML code, the option tags that will go between two select tags. So for hood, polo, t-shirt, each contain different values. So let's see how we created that in Dreamweaver with jQuery. I've already started the, the code here. I have a reference to the color menu, which has the ID color. And I've stored that in a variable called color. I've also created a change handler for the product menu. And in that, I'm storing the selected value in the variable called cell. When a user changes the value in the product menu, the change event is fired, triggering this function. Before loading the new options in the color menu, you need to clear it first. So apply the HTML method to the color menu and pass it an empty string. So passing an empty string to the HTML method simply removes everything between the opening and closing select tags. The placeholder option uses the value zero. So if the value is anything other than zero, we want to load the options for the other menu. So that needs a conditional statement. If cell is not equal to zero, we then need to send a request to load the new options. The reason that I've put zero in quotes is because all form input is transmitted as text, not as numbers. To get the values to populate the dependent dropdown without the need to reload the page, you need to use a technique called AJAX. jQuery's got several AJAX methods, but the one that I'm going to use is a utility method called get and utility methods are accessed by typing the dollar sign followed by a period and it's called get and the code hints here tell you that you need to pass as the first argument the URL of the page that you want to load or the page that you want to access this second argument data is in square brackets which means it's optional also, the third argument is in square brackets, but that is one that we need. Uh, it's a function which will be run when you get the response from the server, and the first argument that that takes is the data that is returned by the server. So those are the pieces of information that we're interested in. So I've inserted the URL and an anonymous function which will handle the response. The URL is made up of data, which is the name of the folder in which the text files are stored. Cell is the selected value, and each of the files uses as its name the selected value. So it'll be fleece text, hood text, polo text, t-shirt text. So this simply sends a message to the server and loads that page. And then we've got this anonymous function to handle the response. The response, in fact, is something like this, the option tags that will go into the select element. So here in the function which handles the response, we need to use the HTML method to populate the color menu with those option tags. And the color menu is currently disabled, so we need to re-enable it by removing the disabled attribute. I also want to remove that first item within the menu, which says choose and has a value of zero. So I'm going to add this line. 
This selector looks for an option tag that has a value of zero. So that's this particular value here, this option value here. And a second argument is passed to the jQuery object. What this does is it creates a context for the selection. E is the event object that has been passed to the change handler function. And the target property of the event object contains a reference to the target of the event. What has been changed is the product menu. So in other words, E target here refers to the product menu. So the context for option value zero is the product menu. In other words, it'll remove the option in the product menu, but not the option with the same value in the color menu. But once a selection has been made in the color menu, you want to do the same thing, to remove that first option which just simply says choose. So I'm going to create another change handler down here to do the same thing with the color menu. This line of code here is exactly the same as the line of code there, so they're both doing the same thing, just removing that placeholder. And that completes the script, so let's just test it to see that it works. Save, go into Live View, choose Polo Shirt, and there we have a range of colors being offered to us. Choose Fleece, and a different range of colors. So that's how to create a dependent drop-down menu by loading the options from static text files. The HTML markup in the static text file simply replaces the existing options in the dependent menu. But you do need to create a separate text file for each set of options.